Hi everyone, this is Devin with RM Wraps, and I uh, wanted to show you how I create our templates for the mini fridges and other subjects that we wrap. Uh, just in case you wanted to do your own design work, or if you want to order a wrap from us uh, for something that you want to wrap yourself that we haven't built a template for already, if you're doing your own design work, if it's for a refrigerator or a table or any other kind of subject that you need a template for so you know where your safe area is and to design extra bleed uh, that you'll trim off at the end, anything like that. Uh, this would be the way I go about creating a template for something like that. In this example, I'm going to be showing you uh, a template I have built for an Avant Co SC80. Here's the name of the fridge right there. Uh, so what I would do is I would get the subject and I would, I would measure it. I'd start with simple measurements like the width of the body right here, the height of the body. Uh, for mini fridges, what we typically do is we do this up the side, across the top, and down the side, other side in one piece. So you'll see in this template that's how I have this built. Uh, that helps just kind of help cover up the screw pieces because you're never going to take the refrigerator apart typically. If you have to, you can always cut right along this body seam uh, to take that top lid off. That's how you get to the refrigeration unit inside of this particular fridge. But typically, uh, you don't want... Uh, certain mini fridges will have a unibody piece of metal here, so you don't want a kind of a seam line or any trim line where if your trim's not perfect you'll see it. So we build this all as one piece and wrap it in one piece. You start here in the center and you work half and half. Uh, so like I said I, I would take a measurement here and here, kind of your width and height. I'd do the same thing, uh, depth of the fridge, width of that top piece, and then I would start laying out boxes. So. Over here on the right hand side of the screen, you see I have a bunch of different things built out. Bleed, body, safe area, everything else like that. I'll turn everything else off here uh, just to show the body panels. So here's the, the width and height of that side of that mini fridge. It's a really tall mini fridge. Uh, so I have my width measurement up here at 15 by 35 and a half. So that's how wide width 15 by 35 and a half and I built a box. Uh, so then what I did is I took the second piece, the measurement for the top of the refrigerator, I'll actually turn that legend back on here. Uh, so here's that, the top of the mini fridge right there. Uh, so it is, uh, in this case, 15 deep, right there, that 15 by 18 wide. So, oop, sorry. Uh, so there's my 18 by my 15 right there. Uh, and then the other side is gonna be uh, theoretically, uh, on anything you're wrapping, if you're wrapping a mini fridge like this, the other side's just going to be the same copy of that first one. So I just take this box, I copy and paste it, and I move it up into that place right there. Uh, since we're wrapping it all in one unit, I don't, I keep them flush straight to each other. So I just make sure my my uh, illustrator settings are set to snapping, and I just snap those two units to each other just like that. So that gets you the whole body, the whole body of the mini fridge in those pieces. Now the next thing I like to do, uh, I'll, go, I'll move on to the door here in a second, but as far, as far as these pieces right here, I like to do what's called a safe area. Safe area is just in case you're applying the vinyl and it's, it's slightly twisted when you install it, or you're slightly off center, left or right, or what have you, uh, your graphics are not going to get trimmed off or fall off the face of what you're trying to wrap. So you don't want a logo, uh, the edge of a letter getting cut off, or, or graphics that have to be squared up to the bottom falling off slightly. So what I do is I come in here to Object, Path, Oops. Object path offset path. And what this does is it's going to start at the edge of the box here and go equally around the entire perimeter of this piece, either out or in, based on if you give it a positive or a negative value. We like to do about an inch. It's going to depend on your subject and what kind of safe area you want to give yourself on, uh, on your subject. So typically what I would do is I would go negative one, that defaults to my units are in inches, so it goes inside. You can see this blue line that it's building. Uh, you can leave the rest of this alone. You hit OK. So now you have a new box that you know is exactly one inch inside of that old box. Uh, and what I typically do, just to give myself kind of a visual difference to the marker, is I will kick it to a black outline. And in all of the templates you download from our website, I have this as a little dashed line here. So it'll look something like that. Uh, 
I'll show more what I do with the layering here in a second here, but I eventually move these to different layers uh, so you can turn them all on and off individually. Uh, so you'll see I already have this line built, so I'll get rid of that for right now. Uh, moving on, I guess we'll, we'll talk about this light box here. Uh, it's the light box here at the front of the fridge. Now what we did here was we measured the height of this with a, a piece of painter's tape actually. We didn't have a, a cloth or a flexible ruler on hand. As you can see it has a bit of a curve to that piece so to get as accurate as possible took a piece of painter's tape and measured that top and bottom lip and that is what I have labeled here the front light box. So that's the light box right there. So that is 18 and a quarter wide by just shy of seven. I actually think it probably was measured seven, but Illustrator sometimes messes with your units just a little bit, but it's fine. Uh, and then we measured from the, that front, that, that kind of bend right there to the back, to the body of the fridge. And that is that piece right there. And then the same thing on the bottom because it does wrap underneath the door. So I took this one unit, if you will, this, this light box panel, it's one piece of acrylic, and split it apart into three different pieces just so I could see what we were actually working with. It'll all get printed as one solid piece. Uh, it just helps your brain visualize where your graphics are actually going. And then again, just so you can see, I did that same safe area thing. And in this case, I didn't do an even number top and bottom and left and right because uh, it was gonna get very narrow. Oops, I need to double click in there. Uh, it would get very narrow if I did that same amount of spacing there. And you don't really have to worry about that in this case because it is a light box. I just wanted to make sure we stayed away from these black edges. Uh, we had a little bit more vertical room to play with. So that's where I say again, it's it's kind of up to your discretion when you're designing this. If, if you're uh, building a wrap for something, what your safe area is going to be, you'd set that for yourself. So uh, there's my safe area there. And then obviously we're not going to worry about logos or anything coming over this top or bottom area. We just want to make sure any background colors, any graphics don't end abruptly uh, off the front because they would come up here and just die and you would see a funny line there where your graphics ended. So you just want to make sure your graphics extend all the way to that outside edge. And then, uh, oh, I guess we'll talk about bleed here in a second. We'll go back, we'll finish the door frame and then I'll talk about bleed outside. Of, kind of, bleed is kind of the opposite of our safe area. Uh, instead of going inward, we go outward with it. And I'll show that at the end here. Uh, as far as a glass door is concerned, I just start in the center and I work my way out. Uh, so you can see I have glass area, that is this inner box right here. Uh, it is 14 and 3 quarter by 25 and 3 eighth, or 3 sixteenths rather. Uh, so that was just edge to edge, black to black across the glass. And then typically if you're setting up a door, in this case the frame will be the same thickness all the way around. You'll want to double check that just to be sure, but I use that same path offset tool to go from this box to this box, and then from this box to that box. So this box was, I can actually sit here and give you a quick little measurement. So that box was inch and five eighths, and then the depth of the door, as I call it, the top of the frame, side of the door frame, uh, that is this area right here, right there, uh, is another uh, inch and a quarter. So I just, again, path offset, path offset, that helps build from the glass, the front of the door frame, and then the side of the door frame. And then again, we'll show the bleed as I add a little bit extra out past that. But that is how I do that. And then if you're building anything, any solid white or black or color logos that you want to float in the middle of the glass, that's where I did my same normal uh, bleed, or, or safe area rather, marker here. Uh, and then all of our elements are built. Then what you want to do is uh, add bleed. You do it for a couple reasons. You want bleed because vinyl sh can shrink just a little bit over time. Uh, if you're wrapping around any edges uh, and your measurements aren't perfect, you don't want to land short. Uh, you want to be able to go all the way down flush to this edge and trim excess vinyl off. Uh, you may also want to wrap inside of when this door is open, there's a little bit about an inch of metal body here, here around the top underneath the light box at the bottom of the door seal that you may not want to be black if you're doing an all color, all white wrap here, uh, but then you open the body of the fridge and the inside paneling is black, it kind of will throw your graphic off. So 
we add bleed to also allow you to trim right here to this light box and then fold the vinyl in and then there's a crease here that you can you can cut you can see that in any one of our our fridge wrap videos i may uh either edit it over top of the video here or uh, leave a description uh, uh, a link in the description to watch one of our, our fridge wrap videos but anyway so uh, what we will do is offset a bleed area and again I just use that path offset tool or you can enter it manually uh, typically we don't need as much bleed on the bottom as we do on the sides like I said again because of that inside panel area so what I will do is since these are all getting printed as one piece I will select all three of them copy and paste them use my pathfinder tool over here to weld them all as a single shape so as you can see that is all now one shape, and I will actually enter values manually. Uh, like I said, you can use that path offset tool, but it will do it equally around all four sides. Uh, I know I need more wrap or more bleed on the left and rights than I do those bottom edges, so I will actually enter these manually. And we'll add two inches on the left and right, so four total. Uh, and you'll want to make sure that you're transforming from the center here, not from the sides, not from one end, dead center. So I'll go 19. And then I'll add an inch top and bottom, so I'll make that 91. So, and then typically what I would do is I would send that to back just to make sure, put it behind the shape, just to see that my bleed area is extra, uh, is one, centered the way I want it to be, and two, kind of including the proper amounts. And then I would eventually move it to another layer here. So, uh, I've already, again already done that to all of my different pieces here. Uh, in the terms of this light box, because it is captive by these two plastic caps, uh, we've actually built this graphic exactly to width, uh, and that just helps us when we pop this plastic cap and take this light box out, installing the vinyls faster, and trimming excess vinyl off of something that's a funny 3D shape is, is kind of a pain, so uh, that's where we've just added bleed top and bottom here but didn't need any extra on the side because if the vinyl shrinks just a hair or if you're just a hair off one way or another you're not going to see it because this is captive it's inside this plastic cap here uh, this is just a, a specific thing to these mini fridges with the light boxes uh, but generally you would want bleed around all the different sides so as you can see we have enough bleed to go all the way around here and fully wrap this door frame and we end up trimming that center piece out so let's say you've you've got all these built, and I just this is just normal text, just to, as a reminder uh, to anybody download the template or to myself when I'm looking at this a year from now, what these different pieces are. Little reminders that hey, the bleed needs to extend all the way out here. You don't have to build these. Or you don't have to put all this text in for yourself if you don't want to. It's just good reminders. Uh, so then, again, all of this you wouldn't typically need this it's just uh, mentions kind of it's a reminder for people uh, but I would then set up all my layers over here and you can just set new layers up by hitting the little button right here uh, name it to whatever you need it to be right uh, and then move your graphics into those different layers so in this case I have all of our bleed area toggleable and you can lock those so you don't move them around I have my body there's all our different body panels are there and they won't move. I lock it. I have my safe areas individually on their own layer. And what you can actually do on that is actually move it above your artwork layer and lock it. And then that way, no matter what you are working on in your artwork layer, you can still see your safe areas. Uh, you could do the same thing if you wanted to make this red area a compound path. Uh, right now, if I just take this, oops. If I take this and put it inside my artwork, you can see it's it's a solid red box. But what I could do is if I unlock my body here and remake that solid single piece, weld it, and then take a copy of this. Actually, we'll do copy of both of those, delete that. It may just come up to my artwork temporarily. Cut that out of the middle. So now I've got this kind of hollow box, if you will. Uh, you could, if you felt like it, put this inside your safe area and lock it. That way, whenever you're working on, even if all these are turned off, you can still work inside your artwork area and save as blue. 
uh, that now overlays and shows you where the edge of all your artwork needs to be, so you can just scale to it. This is where snapping saves you a lot of time in Illustrator. Oops, if my mouse will agree with me. There we go. So now you know that that darker area is your bleed. That will get trimmed off. That way you're not trying to guess, like, where is the edge of my bleed at? Your safe area is showing you exactly where it's safe to put logos in any important artwork. Um, so that's just an extra little tip there. But otherwise, uh, this allows you to kind of individually turn on and off all of these different layers. Uh, so at the end, when you're actually done, you've built all your graphics, you can see just your artwork, what exactly is going to get printed. Um, so that's that's about it. Um, if you're sending artwork to us, it's important to note that uh, we're limited to about 50, 51 inches wide. So that's where I try to fit all of our all of our templates into that size. Or if I don't have our template built that way, just because it looks really funny uh, for a designer to kind of interpret our our design. I will go in after the fact and take their artwork, split it apart, and make it fit to a 54 or to a 54 inch roll of material. So we try to stay within 51 just for um, kind of a margin of error on our laminator and everything. But as you, so as you can see, this one's set up just this way, uh, about 45 wide. So if somebody designed on top of this and sent the file back, all I have to do is kind of lock their artwork, unlock all of these get rid of all that and I'm left with their artwork there on the uh, on the file and then the last thing you can do if you're prepping files for us for example uh, I guess I'll just set something up really quick here let's just say somebody wanted there we go. somebody wanted uh, just the solid red they want to wrap a solid red door they want to do a solid red light box I don't know why they would but they can uh, I would take their artwork, make sure it's in the proper layer over here, and then lock that, unlock everything else, get rid of all that, and then go back into their artwork layer, grab all of this, and you can fit the uh, artwork bounds to the selected art. And that just kind of helps trim off that extra wasted white space that the printer otherwise see. Uh, and they would be ready to print, and we'd print that, prep it for everybody, or prep it for the customer, and uh, send it off onto them on its way to them to uh, to get wrapped to their subject. So uh, that is it as far as building templates go. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Uh, if you have a subject that's kind of tricky, it's you know different than just a box, you can send pictures to us or video. Uh, you can even like Google Duo video call us uh, so we can kind of look at it ourselves and kind of give suggestions of what the best way of tackling it would be. Uh, you can give us a call if you got any questions, 208-696-1180. You can shoot us an email, info at rmraps.com. You can uh, leave a comment down below this video or somewhere on our website. Uh, we get notifications of all that stuff, and we can reach out back to you uh, to, to give you a hand. So thanks for watching. Hope this helped, and we'll see you on the next video.